Shalom Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here. We are live in Israel here on the Mount of Olives, the, uh, the Dome of the Rock in the background, the Temple Mount. Uh, we can, you can also see the Mount, Mount Zion in your background. And we do have breaking news yet even again. Now, real quick, before I go there, let me just let you know, uh, Pastor Paul Begley will be on our news broadcast this Sunday. We're going to be bringing to you guys both the perspectives on the two-state solution. And by the way, we are one in agreement on it, but there's just something that you guys don't know about that Pastor Paul does know about. He just hasn't shared that information with you guys as of yet. Anyway, we'll be excited to bring it to you to get that story where you guys that maybe didn't listen to all the video would understand that better. Anyway, let me get you right into the breaking news that is going on. Uh, then we're going to go to Yana next, my wife. She's got something to share with you that is going on. Very serious news coming out of the United States that the Vatican's doing what their plans are. She'll be sharing, with you, uh, sharing that with you momentarily. Right now, though, in the Times of Israel, they are reporting Israel's chief rabbi urges rebuilding of Jerusalem's temple. Rabbi David Lau says structure could fit atop the Temple Mount without need to remove Muslim houses of worship. Do you guys realize this is exactly what we've been reporting on this very week? And I have a feeling that what my wife's going to report on in a little bit here has a lot to do with what's going on even with David Lau's decision here because it is becoming a, a one world religion, the Pope of Rome. He is pushing it, getting it moving along here. And now it looks like they've got that momentum to get that third temple there on the Temple Mount there. Let me share a little bit more with what David Lau is saying to build it. There, there was no need to remove any of the Muslim shrines on the Temple Mount where there was uh, plenty of room for Jews, Christians, Muslims, everyone. He told the Knesset Channel on Tuesday. Now that's Rabbi David Lau. He is one of the chief rabbis here. There's two chief rabbis in Israel. He's one of those. And now he's calling for a third temple on the, on the Temple Mount. Exactly what we brought out just recently. Uh, and we've been sharing you that with that. We believe it's going to be in the olive grove there on the north side of uh, the Dome of the Rock. And the reason we say that, there is belief amongst rabbis that the, the, the first and second temple actually did not sit exactly in the same spot. And that's also contested by others, but it is believed that that is the, the case there and why the third temple could be built adjacent to it. Okay, now he says, I, can I, I can't tell you exactly what was in the temple, but the truth is that when you see the prophets, the writings, the sayings of the sages, you understand that whoever went there came back full of inspiration, emotion, joy, and satisfaction. So I yearn, so I, so I yearn for those days, he added, the most important site in Judaism because the two temples stood there in biblical and post-biblical times, the Temple Mount today houses Islam's third holiest shrine, the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Okay, goes on here. Now, it, it sits at the heart of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict over the sovereignty of the land and what Palestinians perceive as a danger that Jews will rebuild it as Fuel, has fueled much of the terrorism against Israelis over the past eight months. And remember, one of the things that we shared with you guys is that actually fulfills prophecy of Ezekiel 35, in fact, because Ezekiel speaks about how that they would take and they would use the sword, the sword against the people. That, and it speaks about two different times. And, and the second time was at the time of their calamity, uh, or, or, excuse me, the, one, the first one was at the time of their calamity. That was 70 AD when the house of Judah went into captivity. Titus, they came in there with the swords of the Romans and Syrians and took, that, took the land and destroyed the temple. The second one, he says, when their sin would have an end, Ezekiel brings that out. Again, using the sword. What has the third Antifada done? They have been using the sword, using knives to kill Jews here in the streets of Jerusalem. So prophecy has been being fulfilled. Now watch what happens here. 
Okay, he says here, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has pledged to maintain the status quo that prohibits Jewish prayer at the site and has ordered members of the Knesset not to approach the mount, a move contested by Jewish zealots bent to building a third temple. All right. So you have it now, friends. This is chief, uh, the chief rabbi, Rabbi Lau, is saying he's calling for the building of the third temple. And he's, he's right in line with what Pope Francis would like to see happen. Pope Francis is there galvanizing support all over the world. Let me take you to my wife, Yana Benoon. She's got a, a report for you now from the United States. What's happening there with the Pope of Rome? Well, thank you, Steve. And while we are all distracted by wars and rumors of wars and uh, by happenings in Middle East and Europe, Pope Francis seems to be doing his job awfully well. He's uniting entire Christian world under his own wings into a one religion. Not only Christian world, but the entire world and the religions of the whole world. However, I want to bring your attention to Washington, D.C. in the United States. On a July 16, 2016, there will be an event called Together 2016, where Pope Francis is going to address United States nation. Uh, Mr. Nick Hall, who is the founder of Pulse, and he's a big, huge evangelical voice for the cause of evangelism. He sits on the leadership team for the U.S. Lausanne Committee, the National Association of Evangelicals, and the student advisory team for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Now, he's a voice to the next generation, and Nixt has shared the gospel in person to nearly 3 million students and is regularly featured as a speaker for pastor gatherings, student conferences, training events, festivals around the world. He was featured in major media outlets such as Fox News, Christianity Today, Moody Radio, Christian Broadcasting Network, Trinity Broadcasting Network, Christian Post, Decision Magazine, and Baptist Press, and others. Well, Nick is saying, and I am quoting, that His Holiness would choose to speak into this historic day is a testament to the urgency and the need for followers of Jesus to unite in prayer for our nation and our world. We are humbled and honored by his involvement and are eager to share his message with the crowd that gathers at Together 2016 event. At this particular event, you're going to have featured about 40 well-known speakers, artists, musicians, and authors. Uh, and leaders from various backgrounds uh, for a day of unified prayer and worship and even will feature a personal video message from Pope Francis. More than 1,000 churches has pledged the attendance and more pledges are anticipated in the coming months and more than 8 thousand service opportunities will be available within 100 mile radius of Washington DC during the week before and after the event together 2016. Again, this event is happening in the United, St United States in Washington DC, July 16, 2016 and starts at 9 a.m. and ends at 9 PM. Well, this is actually a very disturbing information because if you do know Bible prophecy, you know that um, mother whore has daughters and these daughters are gathering back to the mother right now. And there is a very uh, serious call in the uh, book of Revelation chapter 18. And I want to read you this scripture. Book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4, King James Version, a Bible says, And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. 
What and is extremely disturbing about this information is that Pope Francis is not only uniting the Christian world, all Christian denominations, Protestant Christian denominations such as evangelical Christians under his wings, but he's uniting Muslims, Muslim religion. He is saying that Muslims and Christians have one God that they worship. In fact, if you go back to the year of 2014, he has invited Mahmoud Abbas and Perez to come and pray in Vatican. And for the first time in history, there were Muslim prayers heard uh, on Vatican's ground. So definitely by biblical prophecy, this is something that Antichrist will do, the Vicar of Christ, which stands for Antichrist. And this unification and ecumenical movement is a really bad news. So again, I'm reminding you the words in book of Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Let's read it again in a summary. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plaques and the Noon Institute of Biblical Research is joining in to that call. Come out of her, my people. Good evening. That's just, it's, it's amazing what Jana just brought out there in what the Pope is doing. He is bringing together, you know, people have been looking all along for an Antichrist to bring, a, bring together a one world religion, a one world government. Is anybody so blind and can't see what has been happening with the pontiff here over the last couple of years of his papacy? It is inevitably coming to pass prophecy on a regular basis. And now, once again, we see that momentum going on there uh, in the United States as the Pope meets in Washington, D.C. Guys, listen. Stay with us. Keep watching what's going on. We'll be keeping you guys up to date there on things that are breaking in Israel. Also in uh, Eastern Europe with the Russian conflict there with Ukraine, the United States, NATO. And guys, we want to thank you guys for those of you that have uh, been supporting the work that we're doing here in Israel. You are the ones that have been making everything that we've done here possible. And we still have yet many more things that we filmed here that we need to edit, get up, and get it out to you guys here. So we wanted to take the time tonight to thank you for making the trip possible and also just a, a, a kind reminder that it's your continued support that makes it all possible. Thank you and thank you for watching and those of you that are watching, you can find us at IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. Shalom and good evening.